Mr. I think what I'm also trying to drive at is what is the strategic framework mm -hmm. that you have and the Prime Minister has in mind as you chart India's course forward and where where do we fit in? What should be the objectives of the U.S.-India relationship? Well, uh, you know, the strategic framework, in a way, is not something which we can determine. Uh, we can determine our strategic uh, path, our strategic options, but the strategic framework is something which will evolve uh, from the interaction of world powers with each other. So now, this is how we look at the world, because that's what you are asking, in a way. Uh, there is, there is a very radical change underway in the world, and radical change in the sense that this time around, really, the 1945 world order uh, is running out of gas. Uh, that there are changes which are happening which will uh, really transform the relationships of major powers with each other, uh, with the world as a whole, with the international order. Uh, and uh, uh, a large part of that is the changed posture of the United States, uh, which has repositioned itself or is repositioning itself in present continuous. Uh, and where uh, some fundamental questions are being asked about uh, the reliability and relevance of the alliance systems which have anchored American policy and global order for, for many years. Uh, it's also a different, it will be a very different world because you have the rise of China, and the rise of China uh, is really the first rise of a, a potentially global power. The last time we saw such a rise, it was masked by the Second World War. So when the Second World War ended, suddenly people found that they actually had, uh, I mean, they had one global power, the United States, but they had the second as well, the Soviet Union. So this time around, there isn't a masking. I mean, it is a, it is a very visible rise. Uh, and that will have its consequences. Uh, Europe is, you know, while the attention in Europe has largely gone to Brexit, uh, I think continental Europe itself is going through a churning uh, process. Uh, in Asia, I think there are other issues. The centrality of ASEAN uh, is a bit of a question mark. It uh, wasn't that much before. Uh, it's not very clear what will Japan do, how much will Japan do, how that will uh, work out. Uh, I'm sort of uh, putting India in brackets because this is us talking about the world. Uh, there are there are issues about uh, you know the future of Africa and the volatility of the Gulf as well, and uh, not least the return of history in the uh, in the positions and policies that Russia has taken, uh, particularly in the Middle East. So. This sort of world scenario, to me, the strategic framework would be a more multipolarity, uh, unfortunately, less multilateralism, uh, leading uh, certainly from the perspective of a country like India uh, to a sort of, a, I would say, a multi-alignment, which is you keep your relationships well-oiled with all the major, major uh, power centers. And the country which does that best actually has a, a political positioning in the world which may be superior to its uh, actual structural strengths. Uh, so I think good diplomacy probably means more today than it did uh, a few years ago. Uh, so how do, you, how do you manage that and how do you ensure that is the challenge? And when I say all this, I mean, it's not, it's not going to be clean and analytically neat. I mean, there'll be issues. You'll work with different countries. There'll be uh, you'd work with countries in some regions, but not in other regions, on some issues, but not in other issues. Work with them depending on time, place, situation. So it's going to be more variables, uh, much messier, much nimbler, but also more creative. And for people of our profession, that's, that's, that's uh, wonderful. Where do we fit in? Oh, it's a, it's a new business waiting to happen.